Hey guys, what's up? I'm Dr. Gonzalez. Welcome to another video, but before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And if you have any comments or suggestions, you can leave them on the comment section below. I always read you guys. I always read. So during the past year, we've been here at home, and at first I have to tell you that it was a struggle. It was a little bit of a struggle just to adapt. But after I have adapted, I don't know about you guys, but I'm so loving being at home, working from home, um, having my own schedule, having not to like dress to and take traffic to go to school. And um, I could take naps, don't tell anybody. And, <laughs> and I eat healthier at home, you know, it's, there's so many advantages of working from home. But um, anyways, today's topic is that now that we're going back to school, uh, many of the exams are less and less online and more on site. One of the exams for human anatomy and physiology, especially in the labs, is the practical exam. And one of the things that I've noticed is that students often are confused as to how to manage and guide themselves through these exams. So in this video, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you some strategies and some tips to succeed on these practical exams. Some of these practical exams throughout many schools, they have a lot of similarities. And so I think this video is gonna be great for y'all to uh, understand and hopefully succeed in your exams. So without further ado, let's get started. Cadaver labs usually have from 10 to 25 specimens on tables or tanks depending on the school and the program. These bodies are donated to medical schools or health allied science schools for students to dissect and find the structures. In a graduate level, there will be four practical exams based on the unit. These units are regional based rather than system based, meaning that instead of giving you an exam for the muscle system and the skeletal system, they will give you an exam based on a specific body region such as the back and upper extremity. Usually, these are the divisions but it can vary depending on the medical school for example some of the most common units are the back and the upper extremity unit we also have the lower extremity unit we also have the cavities thorax abdomen and pelvic unit and we also have the head and neck on each unit, you will have to study the following structures until you feel confident you know them. The skin is dissected away and then you must find and study these. Bones and bone markings of that region. Muscles including origin, insertion and action, as well as their blood supply and nerves. Also blood vessels, mostly arteries and some veins, nerves and lymphatic structures, ligaments and joints, imaging such as x-rays, MRI scans and more, and of course organs if it is a cavity. On the practical exam, let's say for unit 1, this is how you will be tested. There will be several stations using the cadavers, anatomical models, imaging, organs and bones etc depending on the school in this example we will use 10 cadaver tables two imaging station two anatomical model stations and two bones and organ stations usually there are anywhere from 25 to 50 stations depending on the cadaver lab size the professor's testing style and the amount of students each station will have four questions two on each side of the tank and if it is a cadaver or depending if it is imaging or the anatomical models or the bones and organs. 
you will have two minutes per station, this is usually time, and they will give you a number answer sheet so that you can write in your own answers. So the answer sheet may look something like this, totally blank, and you cannot touch the cadavers, models, etc. Remember to listen for the instructions before and make sure to write down your name. Be there on time since these tests are time and you cannot afford to miss a station since each station has questions. There will be professors or TAs indicating you where to stand up. Remember that you only have two minutes. So immediately look at the station number and circle where you begin because you might not start on station one. Then find the card with the question, read it and think of the answer by looking at the structure that was pinned. Pin structures usually have a string and a T-pin in a specific area. You must be specific with your answer. Don't be vague. Here are some examples of typical questions. These include identify the structure, be specific, name the function, name the artery or nerve, label the muscle, or identify the bone marking. If the question is on a station that has imaging, find the error or, or label that the instructor placed on the imaging and identify. You must be specific with the name. If it is a bone, don't just name the bone, but also include the bone marking. When the two minutes are up, someone will indicate this or there might be a sound notifying you that it's time to move and you must move on to the next station and do the same. Make sure you move on to the correct next station or you might get lost and lose points. This is a typical pattern of movement through the station. In this example we have 10 cadaver stations. So for example you might start right here on the cadaver station number one where there might be two questions on each side. So you're going to move down to cadaver station number two, three, and then continue on this side. Then, for example, you might go into cadaver station number four on each side, then station number five on each side, six each side, seven, and so on. Until you have finished through the entire stations. And if you like this video and you want to know more about other study tips and, of course, human anatomy and physiology different lectures, click on the card on top of this video or wait until the very end of this video, which is about to come in a few seconds, where you can click and find more videos related to this topic. All right. Thank you for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And of course, if you have any comments or suggestions or questions, you can leave them on the comment section below of this video. I read you guys. I read you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.